if we were to put ourselves in the place of, you know, Paul writing to us, is he, is he encouraging us to change the culture, to kind of mix in with the culture, to become like the culture, to win the culture? What is he attempting to convey to the Roman people to do in regards to the culture? Well, that's been the challenge throughout time, um, church. It's how much or how far into the culture can you go without walking out of the anointing of God? That's been the question of all time. And, and so the, the way that the Jews answered it was, was that they became so separate. The, Jesus told us this. He said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. But now what you find out, church, is you find out people are fighting for the right to do things that in the last generation they would have thought that you were never even saved if you did these things. And so what we're doing is that we're having this internal struggle attempting to um, be relevant to culture when the truth of the matter is, is that you need to make certain that your only relevance is to be able to take a person to the scriptures. If you, if you all would remember this, is that in some of the cults which, which actually um, came in, whether it be Jim Jones or, you know, the David Koresh or a number of other, you know, the Branch Davidians or some of those other things where people begin to veer away from the scriptures. Um, if you remember inside of all of those things, they actually decided that the way that they were going to become relevant was they sent out girls to actually sexually bring in men into their uh, into their environment. And sexually, that's how they would bring them in. That's how they brought their men in. They never came in by faith. They never came in by, by I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. What they did was, was that they used the girl as a religious prostitute to bring males into the environment and then indoctrinate the male when he came in there and use the male actually as a stud to be able to have a number of children that would spawn their belief and thus in their minds attempt to take over the world. That's very good. Now, Dr. Thompson, as we look and we see that the book of Romans was written, written to the church in Rome and the believers in Rome, what would you sp speak to us individually as we read this book, as we listen to what you're saying that our responsibility is as we kind of finish up tonight, what, is, what do we walk away with to make sure that we do individually? Well, what I, would, what I would really kind of desire for all of us to do is that before we come together over the subject again next week, that what we would do is that I really want you to spend and read the Romans chapter 1 every day, just read it through, read it through in um, the translation of the Bible that you have. I even think, Justin, can we post um, on our site, uh, let's post Romans chapter 1 out of the message uh, and the NLT uh, on the site, and you can just click in there and you can read it from there just as well, and Justin, you can tell them all of it they need to know. But this week, I'd like for you to read Romans chapter one, and I want you to remember is that you don't worship people, animals, you don't break character, but what you do is that you realize is that the gospel is the power of God to transform a person, thus bringing salvation to them, to their families, and to all them that are around them.